Hello again, and uh, we are still with the shoulder muscles and um, the scapular muscles. Uh, we will see two of the muscles that we already covered before. One of them is your deltoid muscle. Again, it's inserting itself into a tuberosity here between the junction of the proximal one-third and the distal two-thirds of your humerus. If I am to take this one out, and again, this muscle we have seen before, that's part of your pectoralis major, and as you can see, it's inserting itself into the intertubercular sulcus between the greater and between the greater and the lesser tubercles. That is the insertion point for your um, uh, pectoralis major muscle. Um, let's look at the, the posterior aspect here. Um, hard to control these things. Um, let's see. Well, this will work. Um, we're looking here at three muscles. Um, if you remember, we had um, a fossa here, or the scapular fossa, on the back of the scapula, it got divided by a spine. So that created to us two different fossae. One of them is above the spine, and we call that supraspinous fossa, and one of them is below the spine, and we call that infraspinous fossa. So we have a muscle that originates here, that's your supraspinatus, supraspinatus, and we have another muscle here that is your infraspinatus, supraspinatus and infraspinatus. Both of them will be inserted to the greater tubercle of your humerus. The origin is from your supraspinous fossa and infraspinous fossa. The nerve supply for both of them will be your suprascapular nerve, suprascapular nerve, all right? The action they will, um, the suprascapular, uh, the supraspinous, um, the supraspinatus, sorry, will initiate abduction. Supraspinatus will initiate abduction. The infraspinatus will have more complicated action. It will rotate the humerus laterally, will rotate the humerus laterally, okay? It also stabilizes the shoulder joint. So that, these are the actions of your supra and infraspinatus muscles. Now we get to two muscles that look like round uh, muscles. Uh, they have a round shape. One of them here is smaller than the other. We'll call the small one teres minor. You will notice in the anatomy that muscles that are more or less round, that shaped like a hot dog, more or less, we'll call those teres muscles. So here is one of them, the teres minor muscle, and here we have the teres major muscle, teres minor and teres major muscle. Um, the teres minor will be inserted below your um, your um, sub 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 infraspinatus muscle. The teres minor is inserting itself below the infraspinatus muscle, and it's supplied by the axillary nerve the axillary nerve. On the other hand, the teres major, you can see it's originating near the uh, inferior angle of your scapula, and it will insert itself, the teres major, into the crest of the lesser tubercle of your humerus. The teres major, however, is supplied by a different name, uh, nerve, which is called um, lower scapular nerve. So we have suprascapular nerve supplying your um, uh, supra and infraspinatus, and we have lower scapular nerve that is supplying your teres major, and the teres minor, however, is supplied by the same nerve that is supplying your um, deltoid muscle, and that is called the axillary nerve, the axillary nerve, all right? If I am to flip around to show you the internal muscles or the interior muscles, um, we will see here the subscapular fossa is covered by a muscle, a large muscle, called subscapularis, subscapularis, 
all right? And um, coincidentally, the nerve that supplies that muscle, it's called subscapular nerve. So you have subscapular fossa, subscapularis muscle, and subscapular nerve. It will insert itself into the lesser tubercle of the humerus, the lesser tubercle of the humerus. Okay, remember the supra and infraspinatus, we're going instead to the greater tubercle of your humerus. What you see here is the remaining of an important muscle called latissimus dorsi. Latissimus dorsi. It's a very powerful extensor, and you can see that very prominent in swimmers, for example, because it, it's, uh, it's a very strong extensor for your arm that is uh, the very remaining cut of your latissimus dorsi muscle. So these are the muscles uh, I wanted to share with you. We have a couple of muscles here that are part really of the other video that I posted earlier, which are, um, both of them are originating from the coracoid process. One is going only to the brachial region, that's your coracobrachialis, where you, whereas the one on top of it, you will see that this is the short head of your biceps brachii muscle. That's the short head of the biceps brachii muscle. If you remember, the long head of the biceps brachii muscle is taking origin from the supraglenoid tubercle, the supraglenoid tubercle. And these two muscles, along with the third one in your uh, brachial region called brachialis muscle, all the three muscles are supplied by a nerve called musculocutaneous nerve. Musculocutaneous nerve. So I'll see you in the next video where we'll go to the muscles of the arm and then we will move to the muscles of the forearm and hand.